when I joined, I was very enthusiastic, very zealous, very excited about being involved in this. I, as I was researching my family history and I traced it back to 9th century Ireland, all through my bloodline was all these people involved in different esoteric orders and different grail chivalrous orders. The fraternal orders is, is like the last vestige of this mystery tradition. It's here, it's still here in contemporary times. I wanted to recapture the mysteries, the Western mystery tradition. I wanted to recapture it and bring it back into my consciousness and hopefully bring it back into Western, modern Western consciousness. So I went into it thinking that. Well, when I got in there, it was immediately more of the same of like, uh, you know, the frat boy locker room mentality, you know what I mean? A bunch of old guys sitting around drinking coffee and gossiping and character assassinating each other, you know what I mean? Like is what I found. When I joined Freemasonry, I of course had already done so much research. I was like bursting at the seams with information regarding Masonic, you know, topics. As with most people, I had an inaccurate uh, view because you're an outsider, so you don't get the inside view till you be joined. So I let them take me into a room, blindfold me, you know, set me up the way, you know, put a rope over my neck and set me up like that's how it's gonna go. And we, they lead me into another room that I've never been into with a bunch of people I've never met in the dark and tell me to kneel and say these things and da 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 da. And then they take off the blindfold and there's a bunch of candles burning and a bunch of people around and, and now I'm doing it, right? So that's all I got though. I got like a little bit of resuscitate, like they read something or they memorized and re recited something to me that had a teaching in it. They, they alluded to some higher knowledge. They talked about ancient history a little bit and a little, you know, like five subjects, you know, liberal arts and da 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 da. And then they said, good night, we'll see you next week or next month. And we'll, you'll have to recite this little question and answer and then we'll make you a second degree. So you go away, they give you a coach, you start learning this little thing that you memorize and then you, uh, go back and you do it right and they say okay we're gonna make you a second degree you go through a little another little thing where they teach you a bunch of stuff and this goes on for a few months and at the end of the time they go now you're a third degree you're a master mason you're a mason and it's the highest you ever have to go you'll always be thought of as a Freemason even if you don't know anything you didn't really learn anything you just heard a bunch of people talk they told you some things they recited some stuff you memorized a simple little question and answer recited it back and forth what did you really learn nothing right but yet you're now a ranking mason and then i found a lot of like uh quick oversimplified brush off responses to anything regarding the esoteric or anything regarding hermetic occult and of course a strong christian uh sensibility that was overlaid over it so if you ever started talking about anything occult or anything hermetic you know, you'd get like the fear eyes, you know what I mean? Or the, you know, the glaze over of judgment. I quickly realized that a lot of times when you confront somebody directly who you would assume would know what the hell was going on, like say a 30 year member that's like a quote unquote high ranking member of the lodge, you'd go, so what does this mean? Or, or can you tell me about this? And they'd get that smug sort of indifferent cryptic look and say, oh, that's for later on, you know. You know. I found that more and more to be the case. That was the norm, not the exception. And that I, I developed a sense that everyone around me has no idea. And then I was really troubled, you know what I mean? Because like we were talking about before, you have to join it to understand it. You're expecting me to commit myself to join this organization before I know what this organization is. It's not right that someone would do that to you. That's a way to keep people out that would be free thinkers, see? We only want obedient ones here. Remember, this is a system in our modern society. Only systems that are in our modern society are ones that have survived the race. And that race has modified everything into socially engineered systems that sort us all into our little demographic. In Freemasonry now, they have a very common uh, principle they call the five types of masons and each one of those masons fits into one of those sort of categories you have your historical mason the guy who knows all the histories down to the details the dates and monotonous rote mathematical mason the guy who's totally into the 47th problem of euclid and pythagoras and all the you know everything's a geometrical shape and geomancy is all around us and that's all they think about then you have your uh mystical hermetic mason like me the esoteric guy who wants to you know, tell you all about the occulted sides and the symbolisms and the da, 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 da. Then you have your political mason. This is the 
mover and shaker, the guy who's advancing through the ranks, he's looking at the Grand Lodge master's chair as his goal. He wants to be the highest ranking Freemason in the world. <laughs> he wants to have his name emblazoned in brass over the Grand Lodge. And then you have the social Mason. This is just a boys club, just there to uh, hang out, you know, drink coffee, gossip, get some contracts, business, you know what I mean? Maybe watch a football game on Sunday. You know, that's his, that's his mindset. He's there, he's a good old boy. He's, a, he's always been able to rise in that locker room mentality of the, you know, the good old boy fraternal network. Every degree that I went through, the first three degrees, I wrote a paper. I wrote like a little essay about the degree that I went through. Now nobody else did this. You're advanced through like verbal instruction. You're not expected to ever qualify that you understand what has been given you. Like you're not, the only thing they ever ask you to do is parrot back catechism responses. How can you advance somebody in a system that doesn't understand? You know, and yet that's what happens. So it's already a fraud right there. They've created this total false, you know, facade of learning and education. They've, they've brought people from the community, business leaders, you know, legal, law enforcement, governmental people all come into this room. They all put on tuxes and nice suits and the nice shiny pins and their fancy, you know, the fancy regalia and they stand up and they preen and they, you know, parrot all the ritual, right? And it gives it this sense of like, wow, what is happening here? Like I'm involved with something so important. And yet, as I've already said, 99% of the people in the room have absolutely no idea what they're talking about. They, they can parrot the lines all day long, but if you ask them, what does that mean? <laughs> or where did that come from? Or why do we say that? You get a blank stare, which is quickly, you know, glossed over with like the, the sly, cryptic grin of, oh, I can't really talk about that. Now, we don't, I could tell you, but then I'd have to initiate you into another order, you know? And they don't know, it's a fraud. They're just pretending, you know? They're trying to deflect their ignorance, you know? Like they don't want to really <laughs> acknowledge. Cause I mean, think about it. All right, if you're a guy that comes into this thing, even if you wanted to know when you first came in, right? But you're not a, a troublemaker. You're not a wave maker, right? So you might want to know, you're curious, right? And you heard like your grandfather was a mason, your whoever was a mason, so you think they must know something, right? Then you go in and they tell you, oh yeah, 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 there's all kinds of stuff to know, blah, 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 you know, just stick around, you know, you'll learn. Well, 20 years go by and you don't learn a thing, but they advanced you. So now the new guy comes in and they're like, oh, hey, there's Jim over there. He's been to your 20 years. He's like you, he used to ask those questions when he came in, you know, and now he knows he doesn't talk much now, you know, because he knows, right? So he's silent with all this knowledge. No, no, no. He's silent in fear that you'll find out he's a fraud. Now, see, what I didn't realize when I came in was that I thought I'm Scottish, right? So I need to be a Scottish right Mason because I had no idea what I was gonna find. I had no idea what was going on. From the outside, I thought each group must be like, you know, it's an ethnic thing. You know, like the York rights, the English guys, and the Scottish rights, the Scottish, and there's Irish Masonry, and there's French Masonry. I'm thinking it's each one of them is like nationality, and na nation of, you know, whatever. So a nation of origin thing. So I'm thinking, well, I'm Scottish and I'm liking the whole Scottish tradition. I found out all about these people in my family all the way back to like the ninth century. We're all Scottish and they're sword wheeling knights and all this stuff. And I'm thinking, wow, this is what I want to do. I want to recapture that image in my, maybe I'll reactivate it, you know, like some Frank Herbert genetic memory type stuff. You know what I mean? And like I'll reactivate it in my own self, right? So. I'm thinking I want to be a Scottish. So when I, I come into the, the lodge, I immediately reached out to the Scottish Rite Brethren. And I was like, yeah, I'm thinking about being a Scottish Rite. And they're like, great, excellent. Here's an application. They're totally right on board, right? Well, then some time went by and, and I started recognizing what was what was really going on here. These Scottish Rite Brethren that I, that I had turned to, they were running the show. I mean, they were their presence was all over that place. They were in the office. They ran everything. They made all the decisions. Even if they weren't sitting in the chairs, they were calling the shots from the sidelines. So even like the masters of the lodge were their puppets and they were totally telling them what to do. 